Hello, and welcome to our month of Azure Data Bricks, brought to you by Advancing Analytics. Every day this month, we'll bring you a short video explaining a little piece about Azure Data Bricks to help you get started and on that journey. This is day number one, so let's talk about what is Azure Data Bricks. Well, to answer that question, we need to go back in time a little bit to 2003, when Google released the Google File System Papers, GFS. That's the predecessor to the Hadoop file system. Essentially a way of taking your data and storing it across lots of different small cheap commodity disks. So essentially don't buy an incredibly expensive hard disk, buy lots of small ones and spread your data across it. They followed it up with a thing called MapReduce in the MapReduce papers, essentially doing the same for compute. Taking a compute query, some kind of analytics aggregation, and spreading that workload across a load of cheap computers each of which is talking to our Hadoop file system. Now these two things together mean you can have an incredibly large scale system without specialist hardware, and it became a thing called Apache Hadoop. And that's kind of where the journey starts. So let's have a bit of a look about how Apache Hadoop actually works, what it is, and that'll help us understand where we're coming from. So I've got some data. It's just a large text file, big pile of data all in one thing. And in order to parallelize that, I need to split it up. So I'll make a few different chunks of data by splitting these rows out into different things. Once I've got my data split, I can give that to each different server. And then that can each run through and do a different job. I'm going to pull out what are all my individual different words. I'm essentially mapping that to an attribute. So I've got a word, and I've got a count, and I've split it all up. And then I can shuffle all that out and I'll put all the common words together. And each of these stages I can do in parallel. Each of these can be a complete isolated task. And then I'll bring it back together and aggregate it. And so I've got lots of different isolated bits of work that could be done across lots of different machines. But in between each, I'm putting it back to disk and picking it back up again. And this can get a little bit heavy. I'm doing lots of read, write, read, write, read, write. So it scales very well, it goes very, very big, but it's not always the fastest thing in the world. And that's where this guy comes in. So Matej Zahari, along with his colleagues in UC Berkeley, went ahead and created a thing called the Spark Project. Now that is taking the idea of MapReduce and Hadoop and this parallel processing, but doing it in memory. And so you're circumventing a lot of the I.O., the disk read writes, and it can go a lot faster. So the idea of Spark came from there. Now, Matei and colleagues then took that and donated it to the Apache Foundation, and that became the thing that we now know as Apache Spark. But what do you do if you've made this fantastic open source project? You start a company that makes it the easiest, the best way to work with that project. And that's what Databricks is. Databricks is this whole management layer around Spark, making it really easy to use. But let's have a bit of a look at Spark itself, so we can understand what it is that Databricks is wrapped around. So in the core, you've got the Spark core project, that Apache Spark Center. Now that is this whole mechanism of having data spread across lots of different parallel servers without losing any data, without having corruption. So Spark at its core is doing MapReduce, but it's doing it in memory. And then we have data frames. So data frames are objects that essentially give you an API on top of that central distributed layer. So it allows you to do data manipulation, group things together, join them, apply common data transformations, but using languages that's fairly simple and fairly accessible. Essentially, it's a way of writing MapReduce for you. So the Data Frame API is one of the most accessible ways to work with data in Spark. You can also write SQL that will then turn it into Data Frame transactions, which then get compiled down into your Spark core transformations. There are a host of additional APIs available on top of the Data Frames API. This unlocks functionality such as machine learning, allowing you to hook into a whole range of open source projects in both Python, Scala, and R. There are graph data frames. This allows specialist data frames for looking at relationships between different entities. So if you're trying to work out who knows who, who also knows that person, who also knows that person, several different layers out. That kind of query is incredibly powerful using the Graph API. And finally, there's the Streaming API, 
which allows you to do data frame style transformations, but as the data is constantly moving, receiving new events as events come in. So what is it that Databricks does, if that's everything that Spark does? Well, Databricks, as we mentioned, is this management layer on top of things. So the real core of it is that clusters, the ability to define lots of different types of Spark cluster, one with loads of servers for doing heavy data lifting, and one that's relatively cheap for doing small ad hoc workloads. It allows you to have an IDE to store your code, secrets to manage your credentials, and various things to allow access. And that kind of ease of use and ease of access makes the whole Spark experience much more accessible and much more useful to the average developer. Another thing to be aware of is because Databricks are a third-party company, they can be flexible about where they make it available. This means it's available on both Amazon and Microsoft Azure. So if you pick one to start with, you can switch over at a later date. And that's everything we wanted to tell you for now about Databricks to get you started. Just remember it's that management layer that makes Spark really easy to use, and Spark is a big data in-memory data processing system. Tune in next time and we'll go into more details. See you then.